He knows when the Lord is refining us, got us in that refiner's fire. It's not to destroy us. Hallelujah. But it's to get all the impurities out of us. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, he's molding us and making us and helping us come forth in his life. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, any time that God is doing a work in any of our lives, it is for our good. Always for our good. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I love him so. I love him so. He is so wonderful. But I want you to turn your books to Malachi. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 3. And we got to page 2 on the study sheet the last time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And really, it's, it's right where we're supposed to start, right here. And, that, and that's really good. Lord, I ask you, Father, to anoint my vessel. Because, Lord, I can't do anything without you. Lord, I can't even teach. I can't even preach. Father, Lord, it's all by your anointing, God, any and everything that is done. And, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for how you're moving and how you're touching our heart and how you're increasing our faith, Father. Because, God, you see how we need it, Lord, in this time that we're facing. And, Lord, I thank you for what you've done here so far tonight. And, Lord, I know that you're going to take the remainder of the service, Father. And, Lord, Jesus, use it according to thy will. And Lord, I love you and I praise you and I thank you, God, for the great and mighty things that you are doing, Lord. Thank you for moving today, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your many blessings that you are putting up on us, Father. We love you and we thank you and we praise your holy, precious name. Father, move for each and every person, Lord that's here tonight, and Lord, over throughout internet. Lord, all through the land, God, Lord, touch them tonight. Lord, touch them, Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus, you know what the circumstance is in their lives. Father, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to touch and deliver. And God, Lord Jesus, bless their homes, Father. Lord, bless them, Jesus, Lord, in your precious holy name. Because, Lord, your children, Lord, they need you, Father. We need you in this hour, God. We need you. Lord, we thank you for you every day, every minute of the day. Lord, I thank you. Oh, precious holy Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And we're going to start reading in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Behold, I will send you my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before thee, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Now, we know this is talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Even the messenger of the covenant... Whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. How many has ever heard about fuller's soap? You know, that's a strong soap that people clean things with. It's supposed to get something really, really, really clean. But it's strong. It's a strong soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. And they shall, they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Hallelujah. Now see, this is why the Lord is cleaning us. Hallelujah. Through these fires and through these trials that come through our life. You know, he's told us in his word to think it not strange of the fiery trial that is to try us. But many times when we get in a trial, we say, oh Lord, why is this happening to me? But it's because he's allowed this to come our way to help us to get things out that we need to get out. Because when these trials come along, we go to our knees. We need to go to our knees every day anyway, but when these trials really come along, we really get on our knees. And I read a, a, a part in an article where this woman was at a church meeting, and she, they were teaching on refiner's fire. And she said, well, I just want to know more about it. Hallelujah. So she calls up a silversmith that's in their local town, and she goes there and makes an appointment. She didn't tell him what she wanted. She just said, I want to make an appointment with you to come. So she went and she watched him take that piece of silver and put it right in the middle part of the hottest part of the fire. 
And she asked him, she said, why are you putting it right there? He said, well, I have to get it in the very middle of the flame where it's the hottest so it'll work out the impurities that's in this piece of silver. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, there's a lot of knowledge in this that will help you understand why the Lord is trying to clean out our life from all this dross. Hallelujah. That's unlike him. And then why it's important for us to get into the furnace of affliction and to let Lord turn it up. Hallelujah. Even even though I tell you what, it's rough on this old flesh. But I tell you what, when we'll let God make us and mold us, hallelujah, all these things will get out. We won't even realize, hallelujah, where they went. We'll just, you know, I heard just like Brother Jason said the other, at this last tent remount. He said, you know, when God gets a hold of you and you get the Holy Ghost, you ain't got to worry about quitting sin. Sin will quit you. Hallelujah. The way it is when you let God make you and mold you, hallelujah. And then she said, to him. She said, well, how do you know? First, though, she asked him, she said, she said, do you have to sit there the whole time that you got that in the fire? Now, this is how important that God considers us and that he watches us. He said, yes, ma'am, I do. Because he said, if, if I don't take this out of the fire at the right time, he said, then it would be no good. He said, it would burn it. Hallelujah. So he says, I've got to sit here to the end of the process. And she said, well, how do you know that it is done when it is finished? And he says, well, when all these impurities are coming out, he said, all I've got to do is look, and when I see my reflection, then I know that it is done. Hallelujah. And it's somehow God will take something in the natural, hallelujah, and put it in his scripture that we can have understanding. And we know why he is cleaning all these old dross things out of our lives, that when he gets through with us, he'll look at us, hallelujah, and he'll say, well, there is my reflection coming right back out of me in that vessel. Hallelujah, I tell you what. And I want the Lord to be able able to make me. I do. And he wants all his children to be able to be made. And I tell you what, it's something. A lot of times we don't understand when we're his children. Now I want you to listen to this real close. When we are his children, nothing comes up on us that is not allowed by him. The devil has to get permission and the only reason that the Lord will allow it to come your way is to try you as fire. To mold you and to make you so that you will draw closer to him. And just like when one uh, brother wrote and asked me, he said, Sister Brenda, how do you get so close to God? And how does God get so close to you? And I said, well, it's up to you. And it's up to each one of us how close we get. The harder you press toward him is the harder that he's going to press toward you. Hallelujah. And that's the reason Paul said, I want to apprehend him that has apprehended me. And apprehend means, you know, just like when a cop arrests someone, that means he's put you under arrest. He's got you in his hold. He has got a firm hold on you. Well, the Lord is wanting you to turn around and get a firm hold on him. Hallelujah. And that's what it's all about. It's not for just naught. It ain't for just God wants to see us go through pain. No, it ain't because I believe he cries a tear. But he knows it is for our good. It is for our making. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 1 and 7. And I want you to listen to this because it said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Isn't that something? It's more precious. And though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And how many knows as we read in the scripture? It says when he returns, we shall see him as he is. Why? Because we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, God is making a church. Jesus is making his church right now. It's up to us to be as the wise virgins. Get in. Hallelujah. And get everything that we need. Empty out everything that we don't need. Hallelujah. That we'll be ready. Finish. Hallelujah. And that we'll be ready to go on in to that marriage supper. Hallelujah. Oh, isn't that something? And we know that his soon coming is not him. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange. The 
Like I quoted a while ago. Think it not strange concerning the very trial, which is to try you. In other words, he's saying, don't think it strange because I have allowed this to happen. And sometimes we think, my God, why did it have to be this? But God knows what trial that will perfect you. He knows what trial, hallelujah, to let come your way that will draw you closer to him and that will help empty out things in your life. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that he's the one that has control over all that? <laughs> I do. Hallelujah. Because he is not out to destroy us. He loves us. Jesus paid that price. I mean, the Bible tells us in Isaiah that his vesture was marred more than any man. That means the little pictures that you see of Jesus hanging on the cross and just a little old trickle of blood is false. His body was marred more than any man. That means there was flesh hanging. There means, and even in Bible history, they said even some of his insides was hanging out on the outside. Hallelujah. When they whipped him with those nine cats, when those nine t uh, tails, uh, hallelujah, on that whip. Uh, and I tell you what, it cut his flesh. And that's what he endured for us. And I'm telling you, children of God, my soul, wretched soul, was not worthy of it. And yours wasn't either. Hallelujah. But Jesus, he done that for us. Why? Because he loved us. He loved us. He so loved the world that he laid down his life. Hallelujah. That we might be saved. That there wouldn't be any that perished that would believe upon his name. James 1 and 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I'm going to try not to spend a long time on each one of these because I want to try to finish this up tonight. But I want to give enough time to each thing for us to break this on down so we can see the importance. Hallelujah. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And the Bible tells us in our patience, we shall possess our souls. So it is important that we get patience, that we get virtue, that we get gentleness, that we get love. Hallelujah. That we walk in all these things of the Lord and the nine fruits of the Spirit. It's important that we let God develop us and bring in us into the place that he has designed for us. Second Corinthians 4 and 17. For our life affliction. You know, we read that scripture. We say, Lord, what are you talking about, light affliction? <laughs> that affliction was pretty heavy. <laughs> but Paul said, for our light affliction, <laughs> which is but for a moment. And sometimes we don't feel like they're just for a moment. Because sometimes, Lord, they seem like they just go on and on and on. But I tell you what, the, the more that we prove faithful in them, the quicker we can get out of them. And we don't have to go that way anymore. It said, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That means it is working in you. It is bringing you forth as pure gold. It is bringing you like him. I love that song. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Oh, that's all I asked is to be like him. And it goes on. I want to pray like him. I want to walk like him. Hallelujah, I want to be like him in every area of my life. Well, children of God, it takes us going through this refinement. And just like you see a fire in the woods, that fire, it consumes everything that it touches. It destroys. Hallelujah. And like you know a fire in a incinerator, it consumes and it destroys. But God's refining fire, it does not destroy us. But hallelujah, it brings us forth as pure gold and pure silver. Hallelujah. And it's more exceeding the eternal weight of glory for us. Job 16 and 12. I was at ease. Let something come our way. Not all the time, because even if we're not at ease, there's still going to be things that come along to try us and to help us, to propel us on out in him. And this is what Job said. He said, I was at ease. But he has broken me asunder. And I know he felt it. And I have felt this way myself. He has also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. 
and set me for his mark. And like I 